Hey folks, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Playing some more StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. We have arrived on Endion. The shield emitters on Endion must be disabled if we are to reactivate Cyrus. The time to begin is now, Hierarch. All right, we get the Colossus this time. Achievements are to seal all caves with rocks in less than 40 seconds after Zerg begin to emerge from them. Destroy all Zerg structures. The mastery is to destroy all the Zerg layers before a certain part of the map. We can talk more about that later. For our units, we haven't used Centurions for a while, and the stun is great for clumping units up so that they can hit by the Colossus AoE. I'll stick with the depths. That versus light is very useful against Zerglings and Banelings to stop them from getting on top of us. I'm going to go ahead and go with Dark Templar for Shadow Fury. Very effective on this level if you can Solar Lance any detection. And then your Dark Templar just run in and clean up. Any of these would work for that, but Dark Templar just put out so much DPS. All right. This is a timed mission, so we're working with fewer units to get more done. So Energizers work really well to buff them and allow them to put out more damage. And we haven't used Annihilators for a while. I may or may not make any of these. We'll see by the end of this. And this is a great mission, I think, to try out Corsairs. Try that Disruption Web. I don't plan on making any Psionic Warriors. Won't have much gas left over because of the Colossi. And then, yeah, sure. Nerazine Void Rays if we end up making any of those at all. To the Solar Core. So we've got our fifth tier up, so I'm going to go for Reconstruction Beam. So we're going to have to downgrade some stuff here if we want to open that up. So first thing I'm going to do is... There we go. Let's start from Reconstruction Beam and work from there. I don't need Shield Overcharge or Phoenix for this level. Uh, I'm going to bump up to Warp Harmonization. Just because I want to change it up. We've been using Orbital Assimilator a lot. Even though it's very useful, especially on a timed mission like this one to get going. But Warp Harmonization to get our Robo Units up to the front line is extremely useful. So we got Deploy Pylon, Solar Lance... Warp Harmonization, Mass Recall, which I likely won't use, and then Reconstruction Beam so that we don't have to rebuild any of those expensive colossi. With that, let us get started. I try to keep these intros brief, but do like to explain my decision-making. For the Mastery, there is a little exploit you can do to leave the Megalith sort of in a specific place so that you can go and destroy the lairs before a certain time. Cyrus, the vault of the purifiers. It is fortunate that Amon's brood has been unable to penetrate its stasis grid. I now have access to Endion's records. Hmm. The stasis grid is sealed by complicated locking mechanisms. They can only be destabilized by a certain device. The Megalith. I'll begin recovering it now, so it may work on the locks. It will need protection. These forests already crawl with Zerg abominations. Then we shall clear them out. If I may, Hierarch, this facility once developed powerful weapons for the Empire. Ah, I have heard tale of the mighty Colossi, steam cliffs besieging enemies from afar. Let us see how they fare against the Zerg. Uh, pretty well, I'd suspect. So this is a little tutorial section for Colossi, which is a left-click, you remember, from the first mission, right? Really long range, boatloads of damage. All the unit variants for them are great, too. The Zerg are coming from that cave. If we fire on the rock formation, it will seal the opening. Just kidding, one of the unit variants is the Reaver, which I resent. How dare they put Reavers on the same level as Colossi. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, that cave right there may very well have counted towards the achievement to close all the caves in 40 seconds. I assume so, I mean, even though it's part of the tutorial. It doesn't matter if we take hull damage here because we do have Reconstruction Beam, and while it might not ap apply right now during the tutorial, as long as they don't die, they'll get healed up in the next section anyway. So we came to Endian second, so I do have access to Reconstruction Beam, which does allow us to have some longevity to our to our units. I do think Slain, going to Slain first is a bit harder than going to Endion first, so that's why uh, I did it this way. So this mission may be easier for me, only because I came here second. But you gotta go to one of them first. There we go. Well done. The area is secure. Warp coordinates for our Nexus Point are locked. Kerax, activate the Megalith. Oh. 
Authorization in progress. The Megalith should be ready shortly, Hierarch. We will monitor its status and alert you when it is online. I get some DTs pretty early and attack with these colossi straight away. The Megalith systems will take a few moments to activate. It will be ready to move out soon. In the meantime, I've upgraded our robotics facilities to construct colossi. You can warp them in whenever you wish, Hierarch. So because we have reconstruction beam, I can pretty much just attack with these things and then not even think about them again. They'll do fine. They shouldn't die. Again, we can kind of keep an eye out, but... And there just aren't enough units here to really cause a problem. So we'll just pick up the pallets as usual. If you find resource pallets here at the beginning, you want to pick these up. Because they're extremely valuable. So I pick this up and this up, and then head back to the middle. Keep queuing up probes. I'm going to grab another. The Megalith should be finishing up shortly. We should ensure that we have enough forces to defend it. Okay, just queued up two more warp gates as well. We're going to run up here. Again, if we take hull damage, it's fine, because we have reconstruction beam. We're going to sit here with our colossi and just blast through as much of this crap as possible. If we destroy this spore crawler, then we can make DTs that will uh, casually walk through and destroy the entirety of the rest of the Zerg. This is going to be our pylon lord. The Megalith is online. We must ensure it reaches the stasis locks safely. From the shadows, okay, and I'm going to start moving up here. We're going to get a Stargate eventually for those Corsairs, but we don't have to right away. Be careful that we don't accidentally... Whoop! That's the wrong place for you, buddy. Back them up. There we go. Now it's dead, and we can sit here on hold position with the Colossi. You can move on up and start attacking stuff. Has reached the first stasis lock. It will be safe below the surface as it does its work. Okay, and then just don't stop with it the probes. And then Dark Templar, just keep moving forward because you're totally in the clear for this area. I'm going to get one more. And we're very short on gas as well. Gas is going to be our main jam this map as usual. Orbital assimilators would have helped in that regard, but, you know, I figured I'd try something a little different. There we go. And then one more DT. And then there's a little Zerg base down here where attacks come from. We're going to go and attack that. There's only one source of detection. I'm detecting Zerg movement. Warriors, ensure not reach our nexus point. Okay, well, we already killed the Martanus. Don't worry. The Megalith is almost done with this lock. I would advise you to make preparations for its next move. Okay, we're already set up for the next move. Don't worry, Carax. Okay, get these gases saturated, and we're just going to keep chrono boosting out these probes. And I would like to start getting more Colossi. And we're going to need some Adepts to attack air. Really, just with these early Colossi, we're in good shape. They can do a lot through the first two locks. We want to destroy all the lairs before the fourth lock, which is in the upper right. Interesting way that we can handle that later. Sensors show the first stasis lock has been disabled. The Megalith is relocating to the next one. Okay, so these DTs, we're going to have to clean up this base because there's an achievement to kill all the Zerg, plus this will stop them from attacking us from this direction. And then next, uh, we're going to go for the optional objective. We're going to use those DTs to defend ourselves later. So this will finish up, and we have plenty of time for this Megalith to do its thing. Stop attacking the spine crawler, please, and defend yourselves. Okay, we're going to grab Colossi now. And we're just going to auto-attack to the main objective. Interesting. I believe this facility used power cores of incredible size to provide energy for experiments. They should be hidden somewhere within these hills. If our warriors can destroy them, we can claim the solarite components within. The first power core has been secured. Warping it aboard now. The Megalith has arrived safely at the second stasis lock. It shall be brought down shortly. Glory to the Daylong. Okay, we're finally getting this base fully saturated. I'm going to grab a forge so that we can start getting some attack upgrades. And we have our Stargate that's finishing up as well, so we can warp in some of those Corsairs, which will help us as we get through these canyons. You can see, like, a huge amount of units down here. What I'm going to do is sit here. We're going to use Solar Lance as we move through the canyon. work is nearly complete. It will move again soon. Okay, let's grab one more Colossi. Never mind, we're supply blocked. Let's go ahead and grab those. 
We have some Centurions here we can move up as well. We want to bring through the canyon. And what we can do again is just sit up on the high ground and take out as much of this as possible. These Colossi can take a beating with Reconstruction Beam. There we go, get on the high ground. There we go, and now we can sit here. And the grid is now with 60%. The Megalith is en route to the third lock now. The canyon grows narrow ahead. Crawlers, they're rooting on the ridge. Brace for incoming fire. Okay, please stay alive, Colossus. We'll destroy this as well. Okay, and then we're just going to cover the Megalith as it moves. No big deal, and we're going to collect the resource pickups along the way as well. Pylon probe, just keep moving up and making what-do-you-know pylons. And we can start getting some of these Corsairs out, more Colossi, and then this is my attacking group. Y'all keep going, and then meanwhile I'm going to grab these DTs, and we're going to sit them back in my main base so that they don't die. In the attacking force, because we need them to defend our base. Okay, we get some view up here of what's coming up, and what I'm going to do is just throw down some Solar Lances. Just hit as much stuff as we can. That seems good enough. And then let's make sure to come back here and hit uh, hit all of these pickups. Okay, and then this one. Good work. There's no achievement to keep the Megalith above a certain amount of HP or anything like that, so he's fine. Okay, move on up, and then we're going to grab more Corsairs. Let's grab an Annihilator, because why not, and then more Energizers. There we go. We got a nice little group. And soon enough, we should be swimming in extra resources. Minerals, rather. Don't chase. Okay, so for this next section... The Megalith is disabling the third lock. We're gonna just go ahead and use Solar Lance. The, you get vision of this area as soon as you move up here with a unit. So we just want to just break these rocks. This is that achievement to break the rocks within 40 seconds. 40 seconds of when they become visible. So this is gonna be in like two seconds. Runaway Corsair. We're detecting a large number of Zerg bioforms in the cave network ahead. We can use the terrain to our advantage. Topple the rock formations near the entrance and seal the Zerg within the caves. Okay, I'm just gonna grab one cannon here in case I think a Mutalist comes with one of these attacks. Now we're way behind on upgrades, that's a that's a problem. But we should be okay. The Megalith just hit the next area. I'm gonna grab these Colossi and start attacking up towards the next optional objective. We are in great shape. I'm going to chrono my upgrades out where possible. And then I'm gonna keep getting Corsairs. This lock is almost destabilized. The Megalith will relocate shortly. As you can see, these resource pickups are just hugely useful. Hugely useful. Because it allows us to actually build units. Okay, let's see if we can kill this thing without losing any Colossi. We should be fine. And then you all, yeah, just keep attacking where you're, where you're going. That's okay. And then we're going to get Adepts and Corsairs. And I'll grab another Annihilator. Both power cores have been obtained. I'll begin working on them immediately. The third lock has been disabled, and the Megalith is on the move. My readout shows Cybros beginning to awaken from stasis. Only two remain, Hierarch. Okay, we've already cleared out a lot of this area because we broke the... Because we broke the rocks. So let's move on up and grab a, a pylon up here. And then more Adepts, more Corsairs. Another Annihilator. We're just going to keep building this stuff. And you can see the Corsairs. The Disruption Web is helping as we move through each of these areas. Now, we're coming up on that area with the, uh, the Master Achievement where we can sort of exploit it. I'm floating a lot of resources, so or a lot of uh, solar energy, so let's just go ahead and throw it on a pylon up here. And I'm going to grab some Void Rays, too. Sounds like we just got hit at home, and now we have vision on these next caves. A number of Zerg have been detected in the caves ahead. Exercise caution. Okay, so this lair we want to keep alive. It's actually quite important. So we don't want to attack directly onto it. We want to kill all the units around it, lure them to the Megalith, and then let the Megalith very slowly 
kill the, uh, kill the buildings and the defending units. And that gives us a ton of time to then move forward. And then I think I left behind, uh, yeah, some of these adepts got left back here. This guy got left back here. So let's move on up and add these to my attacking group. And then once, I mean, this is going to take forever for it to kill this. And then that's the, that's pretty much the, uh, the objective. So we're going to keep getting Colossi. I'm going to now throw down a bunch of gateways. We can't afford them because we just spent a bunch of money. Okay, so this is my attacking force. Pretty solid if you if I do say so myself. So we're going to get moving. We're going to use Solar Lance once right at the beginning as we push into this area. There is an entire Zerg hive cluster between the Megalith and the last stasis lock. Our only option is to fight through it. Okay, and the disruption web, as you can see, is helping immensely. Because it forces the enemies either to run through it right on top of us or to back up. Look out, Mr. Annihilator. So my first instinct is to here is to use Solar Lance, but it looks like we really don't have to. Actually, this is probably a good spot to use Solar Lance, especially back here. Kill the units as they make their way in. Now we can afford a bunch more gateways, even though it's a little too late, but that's all right. We can come up now with those extra DTs as well, because we don't need them to defend us. And I'm just going to get Centurions, and then when we can afford them, we'll get some more Void Rays. You can trivialize this mission by just making Void Rays. Just completely trivialize it by making exclusively Void Rays. I would recommend against that. Kill the Overseers, and we should be able to just casually walk right into this. It looks like, they, okay, they decided to throw down a few units along the way to come and hit my main base. That's okay. This is what DTs can be warped in for to, to kill. Get away from those probes. How dare you. Okay, they decided to go around me. So now I'm going to go ahead and use Solar Lands. I still can't see. I'm just looking, I'm looking for these, uh, these Nidus Worms so that I can, yes, there they are. So let's just Solar Lands here and here. And here. That'll stop all the reinforcements. We're warping a pylon up here. Okay. And now we just warp in whatever we can afford. If we had automated assimilators, we could take this geyser. Uh, orbital assimilators. That would be really nice. This thing still isn't dead, so we're fine. We just have to get up, come up here and destroy this last hive. Okay. And that's the mastery right there. Okay, excellent. So now uh, we've got a huge army left. We could just roam around the map and uh, and be pleased with ourselves that we showed off some more of the unit variants. We used those Corsairs. Again, kind of passively helpful. You can you can manually cast the... You can manually cast the disrupt, Disruption Web, which, I mean, fine if you want to. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Uh, we can go ahead and get plus two, though it's a little too late. You know, taking this base, you can decide for yourself if it's, if it's worth it, because this map, again, is, is timed, and you have to go pretty fast. You don't have to destroy every Zerg, just the buildings. Okay, and that's that. Phase link authorized. The Megalith is now disabling the fourth lock. I don't think I used Shadow Cannon once. <laughs> All right, we get some, uh, some Easter eggs over here. You get Ewoks along the edges of the map. And then if you come all the way up here, more Ewoks, and then a Jurassic World reference, which is the Indomalisk Rex, like the Indomitus Rex. And that's it. Now we just wait for the stasis lock. And uh, and like I, like I was saying earlier, you can you can trivialize this mission with just mass Nerazine Void Rays. I, I don't like making all the same unit if that's not clear at this point. I like showcasing all the different units because I, I want this playthrough to, I don't know, have fun with these games. Uh, in a very lock destabilization is nearly finished. The megalith will disembark soon. Having fun with the games in a very rounded out way and try to showcase different aspects. Don't use the same strategies over and over. Granted, we are using Solar Lance a lot, which was actually very key for this map to break those rocks and get that 40 seconds achievement. But you know, even just you know, using Corsairs, using Starfighters on a map where there's no reason to build it. You just make either Colossi, Dark Templar, Void Rays. You don't need to build anything else. Um, as long as you have some units to kill air, you don't need to build anything else. I guess we'll go and sit our army up here. 
Pylon Lord, you did a good job. Down and the megalith is traveling. Stasis grid at 20%. Wait. I'm detecting activity in the Zerg hive nearby. They're reinforcing the last lock. No, they're not. But yeah, strategy for this one really is stay ahead of this thing. I mean, going through the first and second canyons, like this canyon right here, it's probably going to be with you, like along the path. There, there's not going to be a way to get ahead of it. But after that, especially for the cave section, you want to use Solar Lance for the caves, and then you'll have Solar Lance to clear out some extra enemies as well. And then this section is key for the uh, both the cave achievement, but also stopping the Megalith from docking into this little port and that allows you to get the mastery achievement. There's some other ways you can do it as well, but a lot of it basically comes down to cheese. I think at the beginning of the map, this area has rocks. This right here is covered by rocks. You can hit that with DTs and run up here and hit them that way with Solar Lance destroying detection. There's a bunch of different ways to do these things. Um, but again, I wanted an opportunity to try out the Corsairs. We saw some good adept usage here for the anti-air. We've used Shadow Cannon once or twice in the past, so I'm, I'm happy that... Uh, We've showcased that enough, but just different unit variations here or there. Got our uh, power core housings destroyed for the Solarite. All Zerg destroyed. The final lock is destabilizing, and the grid is down. We've done it. Cybros is free from stasis. Recall our forces from Endion's service. We take this battle to Cyprus. Excellent. Zerg structures remaining zero. There are... There's nothing here that indicates that we did this cave ceiling in less than 40 seconds, but it doesn't matter. We definitely did because 40 seconds is quite generous and we were clearly hitting them with Solar Lance right away. So back to the spear. We also did the mastery because we destroyed all the layers before the Megalith docked at that fourth lock. A new faction has joined our forces in the War Council. I assume your plan is to bind these robotic warriors to your will. They will be allowed their freedom, much like Phoenix. Making slaves of them is what led to their revolt before. Oh, this foolish idealism taxes my patience. Idealism? They are the replications of our greatest champions. Was it so different when we gave your people freedom by breaking them away from Malash's grip? Only to deliver them to mine. I could not allow my people to be guided by Amon's lies any further. But make no mistake, they are not free. Freedom is a delusion granted to the weak by the strong. You speak as Amon does. For the sake of your life, that will change. Instill the Phoenix Machine as the new executor of the Purifiers, and use them as the tools of destruction they were built to be. The Edge. Why was Endion chosen as the world Cybros was to orbit? For thousands of years, it has been a research retreat. Here, Protoss scholars secluded themselves from political affairs to focus on the task of devising technology that would benefit the Empire. The Psi Matrix was first conceived here. When it was decided that the purifiers would be shut down, they became a symbol of achievement, but also the dangers of it. So they were brought to a research colony. Where better than a place where our greatest scientists resided? Constantly improving Cybros's stasis field. And how many resided on the world below? 800,000 Kalai. A contingent of Templar. I only hope their deaths were swift. The purifiers are dangerous. Perhaps you must learn this firsthand. If you would listen to me just once. Nah, dog. They cannot all be like Phoenix Hierarch. Alright, what do we get that's new? We have received new robotic siege technology hierarch. Please make your selection. Alright, so we got the Purifier Colossi, which just do so much more damage. And then, uh, don't speak to me about this. There's only one option. It's the Colossi with the Fire Lance. Eventually we'll unlock the Taldarim option as well. The legendary Arbiter vessels have been reconstructed due to our great need. 
They can be deployed at your discretion. Okay, we'll uh, we'll take a look at these and figure out the best way to use these at some point. There aren't many macro missions left where uh, I'm going to have the opportunity to use different varieties of units. Like, for example, the carrier mission, while a macro map, you're only making carriers. Anyway, uh, we'll find a time to use the Arbiters, I'm sure. And anything new in the Solar Core? Yes. Your plan worked, Kerax. The stasis grid is down. We must act now. If we can bring Cybros online, the battle station should begin to defend itself. And the purifiers? They have lain dormant for millennia. They may still harbor anger towards us. If they turn on us, we will have to fight. We failed them before, not understanding what it was we had birthed. These personalities may be replications, but they are alive. After spending so much time with Phoenix, I share your belief. Cybros will not be able to resist the Zerg for long. We should move quickly if we hope to save the purifiers. I require your honest counsel, Phoenix. Do you believe the purifiers will join us? I do not know. They may harbor rage, resentment for the actions of our forebears. The Daylom is not the Conclave. We are united in purpose, like never before. And that is why the purifiers must be allowed to choose their fate for themselves. Without freedom, a people can be controlled, but never united. This is true, and yet, the Firstborn have ill need of another enemy. And I believe in you to not create one. Your actions determine the future for both the Templar and the Purifiers. But now is the time to act, Hierarch. You are right. The way forward may be difficult, but it is necessary. Thank you, my friend. All right, we're still on tier five. We've got some extra solarite. Sounds good. We'll see everyone next time as we head over to Cybros. Bye now.